There are often times when you need to transform variables in your dataset or add new variables to your dataset. StatTools lets you do this easily with the options in the Data Utilities dropdown. This video will walk you through the possibilities. By the way, don't confuse this with the Utilities dropdown. The Data Utilities dropdown is the one just to the right of the Dataset Manager. Transform. There are many times when you want to perform a mathematical transformation on one or more variables. For example, in regression analysis, a common transformation is to take the natural logarithm of the dependent variable and possibly the explanatory variables. The transform item in the data utilities lets you transform one or more variables with four possible transformations, natural logarithm, reciprocal, square root, or square. It even allows you to enter a formula of your choice for transforming a variable. For example, in the data set you see here, you might want to take the natural logarithms of each variable from column C to F. To do this, select Transform from the Data Utilities, select each variable, select Log, with a shift of zero, and click OK. The shift is added to each value before performing the transformation. For example, you might use this to make sure you don't take logarithms of negative numbers. As you see in other data utilities, you will be warned that the new variables might shift some rows and columns in your data set. When you click Yes on this warning, you see the following additions to the data set. The new columns are automatically part of your StatTools data set. You don't have to add them through the data set manager. Lag and difference. The lag and difference utilities are used primarily for time series data, such as the data shown here. The lag utility pushes the time series down so that, for example, the lag 2 version of sales in week 9 is the value of sales in week 7. The difference utility returns new columns that are differences of successive values. For example, the first difference for week 6 is sales for week 6 minus sales for week 5. Both lags and differences are useful in time series forecasting. To get one or more lag columns, you select lag from the data utilities, and fill out the resulting dialog box as shown here. You can select as many lags as you want. And you can see how the sales column has been pushed down. In the same way, to get one or more difference columns, you select difference from the data utilities and fill out the dialog box as shown here. You can ask for as many difference columns as you like, but one is typically enough. In this case, the results are called first differences. For example, 10 is 125 minus 115, minus 9 is 116 minus 125, and so on. Dummy. A dummy variable is a 0-1 variable that indicates whether an observation is in a particular category, that's value 1, or it isn't, that's value 0. Dummy variables are easy to create with Excel if functions, but StatTools makes it even easier. Its dummy utility actually provides two options. The most common option is to base dummies on a categorical variable, such as region or gender. In this case, StatTools determines the number of distinct categories in the column and creates a dummy variable for each. The other option is to base a dummy variable on a numeric variable and a cutoff value. For example, you could create a dummy variable that is 1 for all spending amounts less than $150 and 0 for the others. The data set you see here can be used to illustrate both options. To create dummies for the regions, Select Dummy from the Data Utilities and fill out the dialog box as shown here.
one dummy for each distinct category. For example, here is a one because this is in the Midwest. Here is a one because this is in the Northeast. Alternatively, you can check the gender variable to get a dummy for males and a dummy for females. Finally, you can create a dummy for all spending amounts less than $150. As you can see, StatTools uses rather long names for the dummies. You can shorten these if you'd like. Interaction. An interaction variable is literally the product of two variables. Interaction variables are often used in regression analysis, when the effect of one explanatory variable on the dependent variable depends on the value of another explanatory variable. In regression terminology, these two explanatory variables are said to interact. You could create interaction variables with simple Excel product formulas, but StatTools makes it easier. This utility is especially useful when one or both of the interacting variables are categorical. Then StatTools creates dummies for the categorical variable or variables behind the scenes, and it uses these dummies to create the interaction variables. For example, using this data set again, but without the dummies that were created earlier, you can create interactions between region and gender. There are four regions and two genders. So StatTools will multiply each of the region dummies by each of the gender dummies to create eight interaction variables. To do this, you select Interaction from the Data Utilities and fill out the dialog box as shown here. You choose two category variables from the top dropdown. And you get eight interactions. Each one is a product of two dummy variables. Alternatively, you could create interactions between gender and spending amount through the following dialog box. Now you choose one numeric and one category variable, and you get two lists, the category variable and the value variable. Now you get two interactions, one for the females and one for the males. Keep in mind that each interaction column here is the product of a gender dummy, zero or one, and a spending amount. The effect is that column N lists the female spending amounts and column O lists the male spending amounts. Again, you can shorten the long StatTools variable names if you like. Combination. The combination utility is useful for combining the values for each observation in some way. A typical example where this is useful is shown here. For example, to create a new column that contains the average of the test scores for each student, you can select Combination from the Data Utilities and fill out the dialog box as shown here. The other options you see are just as straightforward. Of course, you could create this new column with Excel's average function, but StatTools does it a little quicker. Stack and unstack. The issue of stacked and unstacked formats usually arises when you want to break down a numeric variable by category. In this case, StatTools allows either of the two dataset configurations you see here. The dataset on the left is stacked meaning that there is one long salary variable and a corresponding gender variable to indicate the gender for each row. Essentially, the males are stacked in with the females. In contrast, the data set on the right is unstacked. 
there are separate salary columns for males and females. The Stack and Unstack Data Utilities let you change an unstacked data set into a stacked data set, or vice versa. To stack the unstacked data, you select Stack from the Data Utilities and fill out the dialog box as shown here. The resulting data set has two columns, gender and salary, and the values in the gender column will be female salary and male salary. To unstack the stack data, you select Unstack from the Data Utilities and fill out the dialog box as shown here. The resulting data set has two columns of unequal lengths with variable names salary female and salary male. Random sample. The last data utility, random sample, is different from the others in that it doesn't really transform variables or create new variables from a given data set. Instead, it lets you create a new data set that is a random sample from an existing data set. The data set you have seen before is used here for illustration. To create two random samples, each with 20 observations, you select Random Sample from the Data Utilities and fill out the dialog box as shown here. This assumes that you are not interested in the region variable but you can check as many variables as you like. And you can experiment with the three options on the right, but you will probably want to leave them unchecked. The result is the new StatTools dataset you see here, which has been placed on a new worksheet. There is one last thing you should know about the StatTools data utilities. If you choose Application Settings from the Utilities drop-down list, there is a setting right here, which is either live or static. The default setting is static. This means, for example, that if you create dummies for region and you then change a region from, say, west to south, the corresponding dummies will not change. If you want the dummies to update automatically, you should change the setting to live. Actually, this doesn't apply to the stack, unstack, or random sample utilities. Their results are always static.